was very clear at first, like it was very obviously water and I don't know if it was processing or whatever, as, as you got closer there was this sort of blurring of, uh, I guess a blurring of reality, which, you know, metaphorically lends a lot of creative energy and also, you know, really kind of throws your perspective off as a player. If you're watching water and all of a sudden you're like, what's going on? That instant little click will, will create a change that you're not really thinking about, which is a great place to be as an improviser, is to be not thinking and just responding. So in traditional impro improvisation, you're responding to chord changes, other musicians, rhythms, that sort of thing, things that are really in the wheelhouse of being a musician. When you take yourself out of that and you start responding to other elements, it tends to lead you in directions that you wouldn't normally go, unless you're one of those rare individuals like you know, uh, Cecil Taylor or uh, Anthony Davis or someone like that. think of the whole experience? Oh, it was great. You know, the result was, was intriguing. It was really wild. It was, it was, it was gratifying to hear how uh, an interaction happened. I'm not going to say unintentionally, but how an interaction happened uh, without any sort of foreknowledge of what the other person was doing, not just in the case of my, my own playing and Lincoln's playing, but in the other material that I got to hear, how things just sort of came together through a, an outside common bond without people necessarily be, needing to be hearing the same thing or being in the same room. I think it speaks speaks volumes about the human experience and the potential of the human experience. So it was pretty, pretty cool.